Guten Tag. Okay, so I will start sharing uh, the screen and I will just um, have a, an overview of uh, the chapter and the way we are going to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, organize for, uh, for this uh, meeting. Um, as you know, we are meeting today with uh, Haifa, who's a data scientist and our ladies uh, co-organizer, and she has a very uh, relevant uh, experience towards uh, the data science and uh, R uh, as well. And um, before uh, starting her uh, talk, which will be a combination with, between uh, lightning talk and some uh, learnings that she uh, took after participating in several uh, challenges, I will just uh, uh, summarize our uh, uh, activity in Bucharest. Okay. So as you know, um, our chapter is... Uh, focusing on uh, promoting uh, equal uh, rights for uh, everyone, men and women together and other uh, minorities, trying to build a safe and uh, uh, nice environment in which uh, through events like this one or uh, offline uh, networking events or uh, workshops, we are trying to uh, build our skills and improve those skills for, uh, for the community. Uh, we are uh, fortunate uh, to uh, have uh, the global uh, movement which uh, helps us in uh, being, uh, let's say, uh, very well organized. And for that, for example, we are using their code of conduct, which I recommend everyone to review every time before uh, joining us. And uh, as always, I want to thank Andra who helped us with uh, regionalizing localization, the, uh, the logo, which we have. Now, um, strictly on the activity that Bucharest uh, is uh, uh, doing, uh, we have some activity on Twitter, which is our uh, channel for, let's say, being uh, connected with the global community, who is uh, usually more present uh, there. So if you would like to follow, we are posting there uh, the events and uh, we are uh, trying also to, to share interesting events from, um, from the community, from the global community. Then if um, you are uh, an R user, I suggest you uh, try to um, fill in our R ladies directory so you can be better uh, uh, promoted inside the community. You could have opportunities to uh, participate as a speaker or in a conference uh, and all other uh, similar uh, activities that we are uh, organizing. Also, if you need advice or you like to, you would like to be closer, engage to us, you can participate in the global community Slack. Uh, you can find it easily from our ladies global uh, page. We, I marked there, you have a button on Slack and then you have to follow the steps. It's a very nice, uh, safe uh, environment in which you can exchange, uh, you know, knowledge. You can ask uh, things uh, regarding R, but also uh, related to career, maybe or uh, um, things related to to minorities. Let's say in R. Okay, now uh, a brief uh, announcement that uh, starting this, uh, actually starting May, we have two new co-organizers which are uh, joining uh, the team. And I'm really happy to have uh, Ana Maria Niculescu, which is uh, together with uh, us, and uh, Simona Gradinaru. They will be joining me in organizing the events. They will actually be more active uh, than myself. I will uh, be here to, to help them, but uh, they, uh, they are planning to, to continue the, the chapter starting uh, the autumn. 
season. Anna, if you want to share with us some. Uh... Yeah, sure. Um, I'm really happy to, to be a part of this um, in a different manner because uh, uh, I've, uh, I've been participating to the, um, uh, to the meetups since they started and it was a really, really nice journey. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to bring something back to, to the community. And uh, I can continue with the presentation or you can continue. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know if it's also uh, Simona available. I think she logged in, it, but oh, I don't know if she... Here I am. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hi. Thanks a lot for the very warming. Um, intro about ourselves i'm really really excited as well as anna to to join the more active community in here as part of a co-organizer and really excited to see what what we will be uh, preparing for for everyone since um since autumn and so on thank you simona i will leave you anna for the continuing the presentation we have two two more slides all right so uh, we still want volunteers and we are still looking for them so if you want to join us um if you have one or two hours uh to uh to spare uh during the week time uh you can uh, you can contact us and actually uh, help us organize uh, this event and uh, as well as uh, um, help us be present on social media. And uh, yes, tell your friends, spread the word, and this is the best way you can you can help the community grow and uh, uh, be uh, to spread the awareness about the community. And thank you. I'll let you introduce our speaker, Ines. So um, this April, it, uh, I participated in a nice challenge. I wasn't able to finish uh, this challenge, but it was an interesting uh, event. This is how I uh, met uh, Haifa and uh, I noticed her because she participated uh, together uh, with me in this uh, challenge. Uh, and she was uh, able actually to finish the challenge and discussing uh, with her, we uh, uh, concluded that it would be really nice to have such a talk inside the Our Ladies. So I uh, uh, gave the invitation to, to her to, to come and she uh, proposed this uh, interesting uh, topic about taking yourself to the next uh, level by uh, participating in uh, different challenges. And um, Haifa is a data scientist. She's a well-known uh, member of the R Ladies. She's quite uh, active, even if uh, R Ladies Tunis is quite uh, new in the uh, community. They are uh, really active and they have a lot of uh, very, uh, let's say, engaging events on various uh, areas. So I'm really happy to have her tonight with us. And uh, I will leave the floor uh, to you to, uh, to give us more, uh, more insights on, uh, on your uh, activity and uh, uh, on, on your talk. Uh, thank you, Ines, and thank you for invitation. I'm very happy and glad uh, to be with you tonight and share with you my uh, little experience in uh, how I'm raising my um, skills in R and coding uh, using uh, via through uh, challenges. So um, I will um, start sharing my screen first. Uh, could you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So meanwhile, uh, I will uh, give a little presentation uh, from to myself. So I'm uh, Haifa Bin Masoud. I'm an engineer in statistics and data analysis. I'm a data scientist since uh, five years from now. 
I'm an art user from 10 years. And I'm uh, the founder of Arledis Tunis. And I'm the responsible of all uh, the meetup related to data science. Uh, data science. Uh, so uh, today I'm here uh, to talk, uh, to share my experience with you on how I'm taking myself to uh, the next level by uh, challenges. Uh, so I will start by presenting the plan of uh, my uh, presentation. So I will start by giving a definition of what is a challenge. Uh, then I will move to the importance of data visualization as I'm participating actively in uh, challenges related to data visualization. And I will share with you some best practices uh, on what makes a data this good and some of our packages I'm using for uh, doing my data visualization and graphs. Then I will share with you my experience in 30 day chart challenge and in Tidy Tuesday and in uh, one package per day challenge. So I will start by uh, defining what is a challenge. So uh, in Oxford Dictionary, it's a call to someone to participate in competitive situation or fight to decide who is superior in terms of ability or strength. But in our case, uh, we are using challenges to improve our skills and to compete with others. And uh, actually, we, we are trying to make our best to do uh, some beautiful, beautiful graphs as others. So um, why I'm choosing uh, data visualization challenge? Actually, because it's very important nowadays to use data visualization. Uh, data visualization is um, a way uh, to analyze the data, in, but in a better way, because uh, a graph is impacts better than, uh, for example, a table or uh, a paragraph or anything else. Uh, also, it's uh, a faster uh, decision making. So uh, it enables uh, people uh, who are uh, decision makers to decide very fast when they uh, see a graph. Also, it's, uh, it makes sense of complicated data. So when we have complicated data, using a graph is uh, a simple way to uh, put it in value and uh, get uh, insights from this complicated data. So uh, what makes a data visualization good? Uh, there are uh, three uh, tips that I want to share with you that uh, make a data visualization good, uh, which are uh, the lack of complexity, so uh, the, the, simple, the simpler uh, our graph is, the better uh, the, the person who are in front of you understands it. And uh, we have to create an impactful, impactful visu visual. So uh, at the first sight, uh, we can uh, know what, uh, what, is, uh, what are the insights in this graph. Also, it, uh, it, will, it must be uh, beautiful, uh, but a little bit illegible. Uh, so here, uh, there are some R packages for data visualization that I'm using uh, to make my graphs. It's a little bit related to uh, ggplot2 and uh, its extensions. So uh, I'm using uh, ggstatsplot. GG charts and uh, GG animate. Uh, those uh, four packages I'm using frequently and most of the time when I want to make uh, a graph. So I will give you some a little idea about the uh, GG stats plot. So as you can see here, um, GG stats plot is a way that uh, we can add some statistics in uh, our uh, graphs. Uh, for example, in a box plot, when uh, you use um, ggstats, uh, we can add, for example, the, the median, we can add, uh, for example, the number of individuals, 
Also, we can have some uh, statistics like the p-value and uh, the, for example, uh, the class. Uh, also, um, GG charts. GG charts is a great uh, package. Uh, it's a low-code package. So, uh, when I don't want to, to write a whole code uh, using GPLO2, I'm using uh, GG charts because it's somehow a one line code to make a graph and it's very easy and uh, simple, not as complicated as uh, ggplot. ggplot is sometimes more complicated than uh, gg uh, than uh, other packages to make a graph. Uh, but using gg charts is very simple. Uh, I advise uh, beginners to, to start with gg charts and then move to ggplot. Uh, also, I have ggAnimate. Uh, ggAnimate, I use it when I want to make some animation and add it to, to my graph. So actually, those are the four packages I'm using uh, to, to create all my graphs. Uh, now I will talk about uh, the 30-day chart challenge. Uh, the 30 day chart challenge is um, held uh, in April 2021. It's uh, a 30 day uh, a a challenge. And we have uh, to make uh, about 30 charts in five categories. So this year was uh, the first year of uh, 30 day chart challenge. So I take my I was I take my carriage, and I talk I, I was talking to myself and um, when seeing the trend in Twitter. So I'm very uh, new to Twitter, so that's why uh, it's my first year also to participate in um, challenges like uh, thirty day charge challenge and uh, tidy Tuesday. So I discover the challenge from Twitter. I was seeing some people sharing, sharing their work. So I was telling myself, uh, if they can do this, uh, I also can do like them and uh, participate and uh, also uh, share my, uh, my graphs. And also uh, it's a good opportunity to, my, to me to learn more about uh, making beautiful graphs. Uh, actually, in my work, I was uh, making graph, but not, not with the R. Mostly, I was uh, using uh, tools like Tableau or Power BI. But this year, I, was, uh, I, I am using um, R to, to make uh, graphs. Because basically, I'm using R in many other stuff, uh, like uh, doing machine learning, uh, doing some statistics and other stuff. So for the 30 day chart challenge, uh, we have, as you can see, five categories like uh, comparison, distribution, relationship, uh, shapes, time series, uncertainties. And each day we have to, to, to make a graph uh, related to, to, the, to, our, to one topic. Uh, for example, oh. for example, for comparison, uh, we have the part to the whole, uh, pictogram, historical, magical, slow, experimental. Uh, for distribution, we have physical, animal, statistics, abstract, circular strips. For relationship, we have correlation, space, multivariate, three, pop culture, connection. And for time series, we have like uh, topic like global change, upwards, downwards, animation, size, monochrome. And for uncertainties, we have demographic trends, educational future deviation and 3D. So in the next slides, I will show you some of uh, my graphs, but the best one uh, that uh, I did for uh, to participate in uh, this uh, challenge. So I will start by this one uh, in day five, it's uh, slow. So here I'm using uh, the data from uh, an R package called uh, People Analytics in which we can find many uh, useful data sets and in which we can take, uh, make 
many, gra many graphs uh, and uh, trying to, to take some insights from those. So here I'm comparing uh, the time donating and total donation uh, based on where people are, uh, the residence of people, like overseas, rural area and urban area. So uh, here um, I have that people from uh, overseas are more uh, donating uh, more than uh, the other, like people uh, living in urban and uh, people uh, living in rural areas. And uh, here I'm showing the slope. So the graph is very simple here because I'm trying not to make uh, very complicated graphs. I uh, focus on how easy it is. And this uh, chart uh, is also from, uh, I'm using all the data from people analytics, but this time is uh, to show the distribution of annual income by gender. And uh, also this graph is very simple, but as we can see here, uh, the insight is very clear. So here we can, uh, we can uh, show, I, we can, uh, see that uh, male are, uh, are having more annual income in dollars than uh, female. It's uh, a little bit a discrimination between uh, uh, the two gender in uh, salaries. Then I've decided to add some, uh, how I can say, uh, make my graphs looks more uh, looks more attractive. So here, uh, as you can see, I add some uh, logo, and I add this captation, and I'm choosing uh, a color palette, uh, which is uh, Verdi's. So this one is, uh, I think, uh, show my improvement uh, in uh, doing my graphs. And here uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to uh, understand how uh, the Marvel characters are appearing uh, by years, by, their, uh, by analyzing their number of appearances uh, through the years. And I took this data set from uh, Tagor. So for the day 40 is space, and here I'm plotting uh, one of my favorite uh, films, which is Star Wars. So here uh, I'm, uh, it's a uh, linear regression between uh, the height and mass of uh, the, the uh, in Star Wars and uh, in the, for the characters of Star Wars. So here I'm trying. Uh, to um, to be in uh, the dark team, the space, and I choose, for example, the stars for the individuals, and it's uh, like uh, yellow to show like the stars at night, and I made uh, this uh, linear uh, uh, regression to show that uh, the height and mass are correlated to each other. Then um, it's uh, the day 20 uh, and it's upwards. So here I'm uh, using a Tidy Tuesday data set, which, uh, which is male co-packed. And here I'm comparing uh, the milk per co uh, by years. So uh, what is funny here that uh, I'm adding this, uh, this the picture of this co in uh, this graph to make it look uh, looks more uh, uh, more attractive and also funnier. So that was uh, the best my best uh, graph for uh, the thirty day chart challenge. Uh, and now I will show you, I will talk a little bit about Tidy Tuesday because uh, Tidy Tuesday is a weekly challenge and it's, it's 
an opportunity for all of us to uh, to practice um, some data manipulation also with the data visualization uh, using uh, our, uh, our packages or uh, maybe other uh, other tools. So Tidy Tuesday is a weekly data project aimed at the, the art ecosystem. And it's uh, like uh, an online learning and uh, we have a community uh, that participate uh, every uh, week in this challenge by sharing the, the code. And uh, also we can uh, arrange data to make meaningful uh, charts with uh, ggplot2, uh, tidyr, uh, deploy packages, and other tools uh, in uh, the tidyverse ecosystem. So for tidy Tuesday, I created the, those graphs. So here I'm, um, uh, I participated in uh, the tidy Tuesday uh, with the uh, Netflix uh, data. And here I'm trying to understand the, the top 10 countries where the shows or movies uh, of Netflix uh, were produced. So here uh, it's obviously that the United States is the, comes in the first place. Uh, then we have India and the United uh, Kingdom. It was uh, really fun because uh, I'm also a big fan uh, of uh, Netflix. So I spend, when I'm not working and not coding, I'm watching Netflix series. <laughs> So uh, I had a lot of fun making this graph. Then uh, I wish I would use this graph also. It's related to the departure reasons of the CEOs. And uh, it illustrates the reason of departure of the CEOs in uh, S&P uh, 1050 firms. So it's also good to know uh, why uh, the CEOs are uh, leaving uh, the companies. Because I always was thinking that um, the CEOs uh, never le left, <laughs> but I was wrong. And also, um, I had a lot of fun making this graph. Is um, those graphs is uh, they're comparing uh, the distribution of the annual uh, salary of uh, managers. So here it's uh, related uh, to the sex of the manager, if uh, they are men or women. And uh, also about uh, the years of experience in the field. Um, so here um, I'm trying to learn how to use uh, the patchwork uh, package uh, it's also an extension from ggplot, but it's um, an easy way to uh, to put two graphs together. So uh, here, the two, the two graphs are uh, in the same graph. Uh, and it's very really easy because the patchwork is uh, a one-line code. So here, I, I'm trying to practice uh, what uh, I'm learning in using uh, patchwork. Uh, so this is also the, the funniest uh, one I made. It's uh, with Super Mario Kart uh, data. And here uh, I'm, um, I'm comparing uh, the track, how many tracks have uh, short, uh, shortcuts. So uh, here I'm using uh, the color of Super Mario and I also add uh, the logo of Super Mario in uh, my graph. So as you can see, all my graphs are simple and uh, I'm not uh, like um, using uh, a very complicated code to generate all those graphs. So I will share, uh, share with you later my uh, GitHub if you are inspired or or uh, if you want to uh, use my code to make uh, your a graph, uh, make some graphs like uh, like my graphs. So now I'm moving to uh, the one package per day challenge. So I will um, I will talk about this challenge because 
uh, when uh, we are uh, new to R, uh, you hear a lot about uh, packages, and there are a lot of packages. So uh, last year uh, in 2020, I've decided to learn uh, as much as uh, packages as I can. So uh, every day, um, I'm trying to learn more about uh, to learn more about one package, and uh, I'm sharing a daily posts in social media, basically in uh, the Our Lady Students account, uh, because uh, I want to share this with the whole community. So uh, here, for example, I'm taking the reticulate package because uh, this is the last post. Uh, so here, uh, so talking about the one pack per day channels is very important to me because uh, I've learned a lot about uh, our packages and uh, it really um, helped me to, uh, to improve uh, my skills uh, coding. Uh, so uh, I really encourage people when uh, they are new to R. Uh, to take time to uh, to choose a topic and learn about the packages. Uh, for example, if you are uh, interested in doing some uh, PCA analysis, uh, you can have uh, you can learn about uh, Tactomine R, uh, ADE4, uh, and many other. And for example, here, if you want to learn about how to use Python in R, I really advise you to learn about the reticulate package. And I really advise you also to learn about uh, ggplot2 and all its extensions. So just we have to Google uh, the topic and uh, add the uh, R packages to it. And you can find a lot, a lot of packages and a lot of documentation related to those packages. And also, it keeps you updated about uh, the new packages, uh, packages who are, uh, I think, uh, every month we have about 100 pack new packages created in R. So it's very important to learn also about the packages. So that's all for, that's all for me. Uh, if you have some questions, I'm really happy to answer it. Hey, how are you? Hi. My name is Mihai. Thank you for the, the presentation. Um, I wanted to ask you, for example, uh, you, you talked about the packages that you learn. When you learn them, do you have a, a certain strategy? How do you approach learning a new package and so fast, like once a day? OK, so my strategy was uh, really related about my needs. So uh, I'm a data science, for example, I'm doing a lot of machine learning. So I start by uh, learning more about uh, the packages that helps me in uh, doing uh, my models in machine learning. Then uh, I'm interested in doing some graphs. So I focus on the packages who, which are helping me to do graphs. Uh, also, uh, when I was a student, for example, uh, when um, at university, they, um, uh, they are teaching me how to use, for example, uh, only factomine R to generate uh, principal component analysis. But I was very curious, and I go through Google, and uh, I just type our packages to do uh, uh, principal component analysis. And I find many other interested, uh, interesting packages that helps me to do uh, my uh, principal component analysis. Uh, it's not only factor mine R as uh, they are teaching us. So uh, that's how I become very, I became more curious to know about uh, those R packages. And every time 
when I have, for example, a new challenge or a new task in my job, I uh, go to go to Google and uh, just write the topic uh, and uh, the uh, adding our packages for these topics, and I have the list. Also, uh, um, you can follow in uh, our studio, I think, uh, website. They are posting uh, every month the new uh, packages, and uh, they are also um, classified by uh, topic. Thank you. Thank you. What's your preferred way of charting something? Uh, you mentioned something about um, having GG charts more um, user friendly than GG plot, so writing less code. But if you have to do one one chart from scratch and you have to do it fast, how would you do it? What package would you choose? Okay. So <laughs> when doing, actually, when um, I'm doing a graph from scratch, I, I just use the uh, base R. Yeah, I thought about the same. <laughs> yeah. just, I just use base R and um, I'm trying to make it uh, more uh, beautiful using from A to, to Z. To Z. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, well, if I want to classify my uh, my preference for packages, I will start by um, I choose uh, ggplot2. Then uh, I have uh, ggcharts. Then uh, plotly. I don't uh, mention plotly here because the plotly is kind uh, for uh, for tiny apps. Mm -hmm. So plotly, I. I'm using Plotly basically to make my uh, my chart for Shiny. But here I'm discovering that uh, ggplot2 has many features that are interesting and can help me to make uh, better uh, data visualization like, um, like Tableau or like uh, Power BI. Yeah, agreed. I also find it useful to um, make an interactive chart with uh, plot. Yeah. I mean, the command line is really straightforward and you just have an interactive plot that you can uh, play around with. Um, but yeah, that's really, really helpful. Um, and I do have one more question since, uh, <laughs> since I brought okay. the mic here. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite color palette? You mentioned something about Viridis. I thought it was magma that you used in a previous char uh, chart. Is it something? Do you have a preference towards something? Uh, I know. I mean, I know from my side, researching for colors is like a full time job until I get the job done and um, I get the perfect chart that tells me the right story and doesn't uh, hurt your eyes as well. <laughs> yes. Um. Actually, my favorite uh, palette uh, in R is the blues. <laughs> it are, um, I think it's uh, an R color brewer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the, the waves of blue. This one, I really like it. Uh, but I only use it in, uh, <laughs> because I, pick, <laughs> I use it like um, in my work because we have, um, some, uh, how can I say, um, I really forget how, how to say it in English, <laughs> but um, we have to use, for example, the, the shades of blue uh, because uh, it's related to our graphic uh, charts. Mm -hmm. So I was using uh, this uh, palette uh, every day <laughs> with every uh, graph. So I think it's, uh, it's my favorite one. But uh, in life, <laughs> I'm a big fan of, uh, of red and, it's, uh, and the shades of red. But I think red in, in some graph is, um, is very annoying to the eyes. Yeah, it depends on how you structure yes. everything. I also like the greens sometimes, but... Yes. 
Yeah, I, I have a preference towards Viridis, towards the classical yeah. one. Magma is also nice, although I haven't been using that much. Um, yeah, Viridis all the way for me. <laughs> I think for me, it's Magma also. I'm using uh, Magma from uh, Viridis package mm -hmm. because I think all people are using Viridis. So to make a difference, I'm using uh, Magma in my, uh, my graphs. Uh, but um, yeah, I, uh, and uh, recently I heard about a package with, uh, which uh, take colors from Instagram and uh, make uh, make the palettes uh, for uh, for the user. Oh, that's. I'm not trying. <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, trying right now, uh, yet, but uh, I think I will do uh, in the upcoming days and see uh, the results. I've been very busy, that's why. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I would have two questions. Uh, also regarding the, uh, the graph challenge. Uh, first of all, congratulations for keeping up with it. I, I, I myself know that uh, it's really hard to make a habit. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks easy at the first glance. You say, oh, I'm going to do it, but yeah. it's really nice uh, to, to get to uh, do it every day. So my first question would be regarding the, the, the graph challenge. Um, uh, how how uh, long did it take for you to actually uh, make the graph daily? Because uh, um, behind the actual graph, there's deciding uh, what to plot and gathering the data. And there's an entire process uh, you have to go through. So I'm curious, how long did it take you to, uh, to do it daily? Yeah. So it was uh, a job of two hours daily. Uh, actually, in the weekends, I was looking for the data because they are sharing uh, the topics. Uh, and the weekend I look for uh, the data and uh, I search for inspiration. And the day uh, of the challenge, I do the coding. It was, mm -hmm. um, for April, it was very easy to me to, to do that because uh, we have, we, we were in a lockdown and also I was working from home. So uh, obviously I had more time to do uh, the, this uh, challenge. But uh, I think if it was in, in this month, <laughs> it will be uh, very complicated to keep, keep it up uh, and uh, finish it because I really have a lot of works. <laughs> and it's summer also. Summer yes. is very hard in Tunisia. Um, and the second question would be, how, how did you manage to stay motivated? I mean, it's a daily challenge. So you have some bad days, it's natural. So how did you? Yeah. So I was keep, uh, so I was keeping myself motivated uh, with uh, some quotes. Let's <laughs> see. So uh, in my bad days, so um, to be honest, in my bad days, I don't, uh, I don't share uh, anything. So, but uh, when I am in a good mood, I share um, the previous one and uh, the one of the day. So for example, I have, um, I think the day six and seven, I share uh, the two uh, together because the day six I was in bad mood. I don't. Uh, I was like, oh, I don't. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> but um, for but I was telling myself why. For example, I was uh, seeing people that are sharing their work daily. So I was uh, telling myself, if they are doing this, why I don't uh, do this like them. That's why, that's how I keep myself motivated uh, to do uh, this, uh, this challenge. And also because I really like uh, charts and 
uh, doing uh, data visualization. So I'm passionate about, uh, about that. And I think it's good motivation if you are passionate about something, uh, you, have, you will have the time also uh, and uh, the force to, to go through it and uh, to keep yourself uh, motivate, uh, motivated. So that's how I really um, motivate myself and uh, keep, uh, keep, uh, keep it uh, to the end. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes, that's that's a really nice tip. Uh, remembering that there is also someone doing it and getting it done. Yes, for example, for Tidy Tuesday, um, I lack some weeks because uh, I have, for example, more work to do and uh, I don't find the time. Yeah. But uh, when I have some free times, I uh, go back to the old data sets and try to, to make some good visualization. You know, because um, actually working a lot with machine learning and models is very awful. So uh, sometimes I try to, to, uh, to motivate myself by doing some arts by using R and graphs. Yes. Um, thank you for answering my questions. Thank you. So if uh, we don't have any more questions, I, I would have one question. Uh, if you could um, actually share uh, your uh, GitHub account so uh, we can uh, see, or if you have a, a page, a uh, website also, it would be uh, uh, useful. Yeah. I want to congratulate you because I wasn't able to, to finish. So I think you were really uh, uh, persistent in uh, acquiring this uh, nice uh, result. And uh, I think uh, it's uh, also true, as you said, that the community is quite nice. I, I managed to go through the mid challenge, then I wasn't able, but um, the community on Twitter was quite cool. I mean, I, I learned as well a lot of uh, new packages and interesting uh, tricks, yes. I would say. So uh, Yes, uh, I agree. The community in Twitter was uh, very active and uh, they are really engaged, they are sharing their work day on a daily basis. So um, that's a good motivation uh, for someone who is new and uh, who wants to learn. So for the codes, I will um, do some cleaning in my GitHub because also I'm new in, Git, in GitHub. <laughs> Don't. So I will, um, and I will share, uh, share the link to uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, we have some hearts. Thank you. <laughs> so thanks a lot uh, for participating in our uh, Meetup Hi-Fi and sharing us such uh, a nice and uh, inspiring story because uh, it was uh, besides the our part also inspiring. Maybe we are starting uh, more to participate uh, in such challenges. And uh, uh, this this was the meetup for uh, for tonight. Uh, it was a let's say a lighter version. And uh, again, uh, I'm super happy to increase the Bucharest team with uh, Simona and Dana. And uh, for the summer, uh, we are going to take a break. And uh, please follow us on Meetup page, and you'll see there the next uh, the next events. Thank you all for participating uh, tonight, but especially to to Haifa. Thanks a lot again. Thank you, Ines. Thank you. I'm very happy and very honored to meet all of you. Uh, and um, maybe uh, we can also uh, one day organize a joint meetup between Our Ladies Bucharest and Our Ladies Tunis. 
I think it would be a good uh, opportunity to uh, both community to learn from each other. Definitely. Thank you. Yes, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can plan uh, plan this uh, 